Do you know beams are designed to carry bending moments? A beam is a structural element that resists loading normal to its longitudinal axis. A beam transfers load from slab or upper structure to supports usually walls or columns. Today, you will learn how to draw bending moment and shear force diagrams. A shear force is the force that acts parallel to the cross section of the beam. And a bending moment is the moment that is generated due to applied normal loads. Let's dive into this lecture. Stay tuned until the end of the lecture to learn completely how to draw these diagrams. Hey friends, if you're new here, I am Dr. Javed Qureshi, a senior lecturer at a London university. On this channel, we explore technical and human skills to help us lead more productive, happy and examine life. Shear force and bending moment diagrams are the most powerful tools that every civil, structural and mechanical engineer uses to analyze beams under loading. To draw these diagrams, we cut, isolate and balance forces along the structure. Interpreting these diagrams helps us design safer structures. With practice, you will master these essential tools for structural analysis. First, let's break down what shear force and bending moments are. When the load is applied, the beam tends to deform. Internal forces develop to maintain equilibrium. If the beam is strong enough, it will resist the applied loading. These internal forces have two components. We have shear force oriented parallel to the cross section. Shear force essentially is the sideways force that tries to make one part of an object slide or move relative to another part. We also have normal or axial forces that act perpendicular to the cross section. Normal forces are always oriented along the axis of the beam. If the beam is sagging, the top portion of the cross section will get shorter and bottom will get longer. In other words, it is bending in a concave upward manner, causing compression at the top and tension at the bottom. Compressive force is a pushing force that has a matching pulling or tensile force equal in magnitude but opposite in direction. Therefore, these forces cancel each other out and produce no net force, but they produce a bending moment. It means internal forces can be simplified into two resultant components, a shear force representing vertical forces and a bending moment representing normal forces. This simplification allows us to effectively represent internal forces with just two components. This is the most common method used to represent internal forces in a beam. The internal forces depend on loading and support conditions. Loading can be applied in number of ways. The most simple and common one is concentrated force or point loads. This point load can be at mid span or anywhere along the length of the beam. The next one is distributed load or uniformly distributed load. In this case, the load is distributed evenly along the length of the beam. The third one is the concentrated moment, which isn't very common in engineering discipline. All structures must be somehow supported on ground. There are three most common supports in structural analysis. First is hinge, pin or simple support. Second is roller support. Third is fully fixed, rigid, clamped or encaster support. If a degree of freedom is restrained at support, we will have a corresponding reaction at that point. For instance, rotations are permitted for simple support, so there is no resisting moment. Both horizontal and vertical translations are prevented. We have horizontal and vertical reaction. In case of roller support, we have vertical displacement prevented, so we only have vertical reaction. For fully fixed support, all displacements are prevented, so we have three reactions, horizontal and vertical reaction forces and reaction or resisting moment. How do you determine shear force and bending moment diagram for a beam? There are three steps. First, we draw the free body diagram which shows all applied forces and reaction on the beam. 
The next step is to determine reaction forces and reaction moments at supports. We use equilibrium equations to determine reactions. For equilibrium, sum of all forces and moments should be equal to zero. If we can solve a structure using three equilibrium equations, we call it statically determinate structure. This means number of unknown reactions must be equal to number of equilibrium equations. When a beam has more than three unknown reactions, we cannot solve it using equilibrium equations because we have too many unknowns and not enough equilibrium equations. The structures having more than three reactions are known as statically indeterminate structures. We need more complicated methods such as force and displacement method to solve indeterminate structures. Also, hand calculations can be so time consuming for indeterminate structures. We normally use structural analysis and design software to solve these structures. In this video, I will only focus on statically determinate beams where equilibrium equations are enough to solve for unknown reactions. The final step is to find out internal forces and bending moments along the length of the beam. To determine internal forces, we cut, isolate, and balance forces along the beam. If we cut the beam at any point along the length, the internal forces and moments must cancel out external forces and moment to maintain equilibrium. This helps us figure out shear forces and bending moments at any location along the beam. We have to start at one side of the beam and move location of the cut along the beam, finding out shear forces and bending moments. The process continues until we find out all internal forces. Now I will explain sign conventions for positive and negative internal forces. The normal or axial force is positive when it stretches the member and creates tension. A shear force is positive when it causes the beam segment to rotate clockwise. It is these pair of up and down forces that are called shear forces because their effect is to shear the slice. The moment is positive when the segment will bend in a concave upward manner. Positive forces will be those that put the bottom section of the beam in tension. Normally bending moments that cause sagging of the beam are positive. The axial or normal force is negative when it makes the member shorter and creates compression. A shear force is negative when it causes the beam segment to rotate in anti-clockwise manner. The moment is negative when the segment will bend in concave downward manner. This type of moment is also called hogging moment. A hogging moment creates tension at top of the beam and compression at bottom of the beam. What is positive sign convention for beams? When we cut a beam, we observe internal forces. If you are at right of the cut, downward forces and anti-clockwise moments are positive. If you are at left side of the cut, upward forces are positive and clockwise moments are positive. The bending moment that causes sagging of the beam will lead to positive sign convention. Put it simply, on left side of the beam, upward forces and clockwise moments are always positive. Let us take an example of a beam loaded by two unequal point loads. The first step is to draw the free body diagram. Left side of the beam has pin support. Therefore, two reaction forces will develop horizontal and vertical. Right side has lower support. It will have only one vertical reaction. We will apply equilibrium equations to solve for unknown forces and moments. There is no reaction moment. If the support was fully fixed, we would have a reaction moment. The sum of forces in horizontal direction is equal to zero. As horizontal reaction HA is the only horizontal force, it has to be zero. For vertical equilibrium, the sum of forces in vertical direction must be zero. So RA and RB is equal to 35 plus 50. Sum of moments along any point must also be zero. Let us find out sum of moments at point B. This will give us value of reaction force 
at a as 45. We then substitute RA in previous equation to find out RB. When all internal and external forces are known, we are now ready to plot shear force and bending moment diagrams. We use a very simple principle to draw these diagrams. We simply cut, isolate and balance forces along the length of the beam. Let us start from the left side of the beam and draw the free body diagram at a location just after the support. For equilibrium, the shear force on right side must be equal to the reaction force on left side. We can draw this shear force on diagram. The shear force remains constant until the next force is applied. Moment is simply force times distance. The bending moment at cut is equal to 45 kN reaction times the distance x to the reaction force. This gives us a straight line equation for the moment. We can draw the moment on our bending moment diagram. We repeat the process by moving the cut further to the right. The cut is now just placed after 35 kN load. We then draw a free body diagram to find out the shear force and bending moment. The total vertical force on left side of the cut is 45 minus 35, which gives us 10 kN upward force. This force is balanced by 10 kN downward force at the right side of the cut. Similarly, we come up with a straight line equation for moment. We then plot these values on shear force and bending moment diagram. The process is repeated until we cover the entire length of the beam. We finish the process with complete shear force and bending moment diagram for the beam.